Good morning, church. Welcome home. Welcome online with us this Sunday. It's a joy to see all of you back. Amen. Are you glad to be online with us today? So let's listen to the word of God this morning, shall we? Amen. And I want to share with you today a very unique message entitled, Peter walking on water, what can we learn? Peter walking on water, what can we learn? And I will bring you readings from uh, Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 to 31. Follow me as I read, yeah? Okay, thank you. Verses 25, one verse says, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sing, cry out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Amen. Let's pray. Father, bless your word and use your word to speak to us and encourage us and strengthen us to learn some very important truth here from Peter's life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. You see, the Apostle Peter was a man who stumbled so many times. But a good thing about Peter is that he never failed to follow Jesus. Never. He failed many times. He sinned a number of times and he denied Jesus as well three times. And he's boastful, he's arrogant. But the one thing good about Peter we can learn from him is that he never failed to follow Jesus. He never failed to seek after him. His life was filled with many lessons that encourage us today and give us hope and uh, for our own walk with Christ daily in our lives. You know, this message I'm going to talk about today, uh, we want to consider four specific lessons that we can learn from when, we, when Peter walked on water. What can we learn from him when he walked on water in Matthew chapter 14? Amen. So today, are you ready to sail with me? Are you ready to come on board with me as we go along and listen and learn from Peter today? Amen. So what are these precious lessons which we can learn from Peter's life, this season of his life, when he walked on the water? I want to, I want to share with you four. Lesson number one, Peter had great faith. Do you know Peter was a man of faith? The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 to 29, he said, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. You know, Peter was not just an impulsive person. He, he is a very impulsive person. He's not just an impulsive person. Always speak without, and do without thinking. But he is also very much a risk taker. Here in Matthew 14, once again, Peter wanted to take risks. You know what was the risk? He wanted to walk on the water. And now it was his idea. He stepped out in faith when Jesus told him to come to him, even though it didn't make sense to his natural understanding. Peter, at this moment, never even questioned the ability of a human being to walk on water. It is impossible. It is impossible to walk on water. In all senses, it, it, for a human being to walk on water. But when he sought the Lord, his faith built up. And he said, Lord, if it's truly you, if it's truly you. Initially, he thought it was a ghost. Initially, he thought it was something else. But when Jesus replied, it is I. And when Peter saw Jesus, when people realized it was Jesus, his faith level shot up. 
And he looked at Jesus and said, Lord, if it is truly you, call me to come over. Call me. Why did he say, call me? Why didn't he say, Lord, I will come over? Why did he say, Lord, call me? Because his faith is not based on himself. His faith is not based on anything else but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Our faith in God is based on Jesus Christ. Only His Word, only Him establish our faith and build our faith and give us the assurance in our faith to dare to trust and dare to believe and dare to walk with Him. Not on anything else. Not even on ourselves. Not even on our finances, on, on our wealth. It's on Him. The Bible says He stepped out when He saw the Lord. What about you today when you and I go through the roughness of what we are going through in this season of our lives, the pandemic season? It has a long stretch season for one over a year now. Where do you need to step out in faith? It could be your finances, trusting God for your finances. It could be trusting God for your protection. It could be in the area of trusting God uh, uh, for health. It could be trusting God that God will take care of your family, your children. God will take care of all of your need. It could be in the area of, you know what, not allowing the pandemic, the COVID-19 to put fear into your life. You and I can still live our life the way we used to live, but not in the normal way of going around and getting close to people and talking to people like we used to be, though we have to keep social distancing, wear our masks and be careful and sanitize ourselves. But you know what? Though life may be different, we can still live with the Lord. Where do you need to step up in faith? No matter how hard Peter thought about it, he couldn't have come up with a way that he could walk on water. Sometimes we need to take the step God is calling us to take before we can see how it will be unfold. One more time. Sometimes, we need to take a step of faith as God calls us to step out, to believe Him, to trust in Him without seeing. But when we take the step of faith to step out from the boat, step out from our situation, step out from our predicament, step out from our challenges, uh, a challenging time and season in our life and struggles in our life in this season, you know what? You will see God's plan, God's will, God's miracle unfold to you and to me. Amen? So therefore, where are you staying safe in the boat of your life instead of stepping out in faith onto the water? You know, sometimes we need to tell ourselves, sometimes we live in so much of fear, with so much of fear in our lives. We dare not do this, we dare not do that. You know, the pandemic will stop one day not now not tomorrow maybe not even next month or three months down the road or not even this year but you know what it will stop one day amen so our part is we have to have great faith peter had great faith we need to learn to have faith peter had faith because he saw jesus because he looked at jesus because he trusted in jesus because he believed with God, all things are possible. Do you believe in Him? All things are possible for you. Amen. So we have great faith. Let's look at the second lesson we can learn from Peter. Peter's doubt came from his natural eyes. One more time. Peter's doubt came from his natural eyes. Let's look at it. In Matthew 14, verse 30, the first part says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. You saw that? When he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. What do you mean by he saw the wind? 
He saw the roughness of the sea. He saw the wave that's reaching up to him. He saw some of the rainwater, the, the, the wave and the seawater touches him. He saw the, the situation he was in. How come he initially when he said, Lord, help me to uh, call me to walk to you, he didn't see the situation he saw. But when he was focused on Jesus, everything changes. Now, when he shifted his focus from Jesus to his situation, you know what? He began to sink. Peter doubted when he looked at his surrounding and took his eyes off Jesus. It looks like us, isn't it? Sometimes we look so much at our surrounding. We look so much at the predicament and the challenges of the pandemic. We look so much of ourselves and our situation and our struggles and our difficulties, you know, and, 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 and the challenges that we are going through today in living on this earth. You know what? It's so easy when we focus on all these things that's happening around us, we will shift our focus from God whom we believe, from God whom we trust, from God who is a miracle working God, from God who is capable to do the impossible, from God who can turn the table around, from God who is faithful, who is still good, who is still on the throne, who is still in control, who is still powerful. You know, when we turn our eyes away from God, Everything around us crumble. Everything around us weigh down on us and it will cast a shadow of fear upon every one of us. It put a chill down our back. It can be far too easy to take our eyes off Jesus and become consumed with our circumstances. But when we when we only look at what is around us, what we are going through, we can't see things the way God sees them. When Peter looked at his surrounding, his faith withered, his faith faded, and he began to sing. The same thing can happen to us today when we keep our eyes off God. We walk by faith and not by sight. When we keep our eyes off God, everything around us seems to be so difficult, so heavy, so struggling to handle. <sighs> Church, whatever you and I are facing, we're all in the same boat together. The whole world is in the same boat together, the same season of the pandemic. But when you take your eyes and I take my eye off Jesus, you know what happened? The things around us in the world seems to be and looks much, much more bigger, more challenging, more problematic than you and I could ever fathom. When we keep our eyes on God, we can walk by faith. When we look at Jesus without turning our eyes off Him, you know what? He will grant us the grace. We can see Him working and doing things in our lives that we will not be able to comprehend that God is so wonderful. What about you today? Is there situations that, that makes it easy to take your eyes off Christ? Is it finances? Is it food? Is it clothing? Is it uh, your work, your business, your career? Is it your relationships? Whatever it may be. But the first step is to recognize it and give God time to give you His perspective on things. You know, sometimes when you look at the things around us, the first step is to recognize Recognize we are in this predicament together. And then give God time to give you, to help you to have His perspective, to look at things through the lens of God on what we are going through. Remember, it's always about God. It's always about God's desire to make you and I more and more and more like Christ. He used your circumstances. He used my situation to build His kingdom. 
and to spread His influence and to spread His word to this world that many people will come to know the Lord at the same time to help you and I to see we, ourselves, all these years we became Christian, how strong, how good our foundation is. How much we can trust, how much we can believe, how much we can rely on God, how good our God is. We may not always see how, so we only need to trust God. Amen? And that is what it means to walk by faith. We can't see, we won't be able to comprehend, we won't be able to understand, but God is still in the business of doing miracles. God is still the professional in coming storms. God is still the healer. God is still the provider. God is still the sustainer. God is still the protector. Amen? And God is still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. He is good. Amen? He is good. He is El Shaddai, the God Almighty, the great God. Amen? So don't lose sight on that. When you lose sight on that, when you look at the things around you, the things around you will squeeze you into his, their molds. And you will think and you will behave, you will live, you will act, you will talk the way they want you to talk and think. And that's what the devil wants. He wants you to be succumbed to the circumstances around you and the devil wants you not to be fearful and to be afraid and the devil wants you to turn your eyes away from God. When you do that, you turn away from God, your eyes and your faith and your belief and your understanding. You know what happened? You and I will be sucking by the circumstances, will be sucking by the challenges, will be sucking by the problem that we are facing in the world today. Take note of this and beware. Amen? Number three, lesson we can learn. Peter turned to Jesus when he started to sing. Peter turned to Jesus when he started to sing. Matthew chapter 14, verse 30, second part says, Beginning to sing, he cried out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. When Peter sang, he fell, when Peter fell, when Peter complained, when people get upset, when Peter don't understand. The first thing he did, and he did right, he turned to Jesus, not back to the boat. His old way of thinking, his old way of trusting, his old way of believing. He turned to Jesus and not back to the boat. Not on his former wealth, not on the former health, not on the former life. When we encounter problems, it can be easy to just focus on the situation in front of us. One more time, when we encounter problems, it, is, it can be easy to just focus on the situation in front of us or how our natural self may want to handle something. You know, sometimes it's so easy when we encounter problems, when we encounter challenges, the first thing we do is, I have this, I have that, I can do this, I can do that. Hey, how many of us say we will look to Jesus? We will look to Jesus. We will trust Jesus. We will still believe. We do our part, but we will let God do His part. We will trust in Him. When Peter realized what was happening in his life, the Bible says he reached out to Jesus in desperation. And the Bible said Jesus reached down to him. Jesus saved him and Jesus desires to do the same for you and I today. When you and I reach out to him in your situation, in your circumstances, in your struggles in life, he, as long as you and I reach out to him, he will reach down to us. When Peter reached out to the Lord, reached down to, up to the Lord, the Lord reached out and lift him up from his situation. I do not know what you're going through in life, but you know what? Reach out to the Lord. Reach out to the Lord. 
At this moment, we have some brothers and sisters who are in the hospital because of COVID-19. And every day when we, our, our pastoral staff, or we call them, you know, we assure we pray for them. We say, Pastor, we are trusting God. We are looking to God. I'm looking to God. I'm believing God for a miracle. I'm believing God for a miracle. I'm doing better today. I'm doing better today than yesterday. They are not fully healed yet, recovered yet. But they are saying, I'm, I'm doing better today than yesterday. I'm believing God for a miracle today and to compare to the miracle yesterday. We are safe when we reach out to Jesus for help. But it doesn't mean everything will be easy. It doesn't mean everything that will be silent or that there will be no problems in our lives and difficulties in our life in this month, next month, the following month, even the next three, four months. What about you today? Where do you need to turn back to Christ for help? Sometimes we have been walking on our way, our own journey, the way we chatted it out for ourselves. And we landed ourselves in so much a struggle, so much a problem, so much a misunderstanding, so much a pain. Where do you need to turn back to Christ for help? It's never too late to start doing what is right. One more time, it's never too late to start doing what is right, to trust, to believe, to rely, and to walk with Jesus. Amen? Come back to Him. Don't waste time thinking you need to fix something before you turn to Him. Just reach out to Him. Just grab hold of God's hands. He is ready and He is waiting for you. Amen? For you to turn back to Him. For you to reach out to Him. For you to say, God, I've tried all that I can do. I fail and I fail and I fail and I fail again, over again. I get more angry and more angry. I'm going to let go of this. I'm going to look to you. I'm going to grab hold of your hand. I'm going to turn back to you. I'm going to trust in you. Amen? I'm not going to allow fear to take control of me. I'm not going to allow COVID-19 to frighten me so much. It caused me so much pain and so much doubt. I want to turn back to you. I want to trust in you. I want to believe you are still in control. I want to believe you are the provider. Reach out to him and grab him. He is waiting for you and I to reach out to him. You know what? He will always come true in ways beyond our comprehension. Amen? That's our God. And lastly, lesson four, Jesus helped Peter. Jesus helped Peter immediately. You saw the word, Jesus helped Peter immediately. Verse 31 of Matthew 14, immediately, you saw that immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt. Why did you doubt? Jesus didn't leave Peter to fend for himself and figure out how to get out of the situation caused by his doubt. Jesus did not left, let Peter handle his own situation, his own problem himself. When Peter caught up to him, he reached out immediately to help Peter. You know, church, what you are facing, what you are going through, your struggles and your challenges in life, He will not let you fend for yourself alone. He will not let you go the journey alone. He is constantly, daily, every day with you and I through it all. Only that you and I did not realize that only that you and I need to reach out to Him and look to Him. When Peter asked Jesus to save him, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him as shown in Matthew 14 verse 31. And he will do the same for us today when you reach out to him. Amen. He is waiting for you not to reach out so that he can catch up your hand and lift you up so that he can do a miracle in your situation, so that he can heal you, so that he can provide for you, so that he can help you go through this time. of challenges in your life, in my life, amen. And Jesus also gave Peter an aspiration, a hope, an ambition 
to achieve something when he learned to reach out to Jesus and when he asked him. You know, Jesus never once cast him off. Jesus never once said, get out of me. He gave him the hope. He gave him the aspiration of achieving something. That's why he asked this. In verse 31c, he said, why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? The simplicity of this question from Jesus makes it clear. Just how unnecessary Peter's doubt was. He said to him, why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? He was just telling Peter and he is telling you and telling me, hey, it is unnecessary to doubt. It is unnecessary to be fearful. It is unnecessary to get angry. It is unnecessary to get upset. Uh, what is happening in our country? What is happening in our world today? It's unnecessary to get upset. It's unnecessary to die. It's unnecessary to get angry. He told Peter, unnecessary. You were focusing on me. You were walking with me. You were walking towards me. You were, you were, you were following me when you look at me. But when you're so distracted with so many things around you, you begin to sink. What about you, church? Brother and sister, what about you? Where do you doubt? Where, where can you reach out your hand to Jesus? You know what? Just turn to Him and He will help you immediately. One more time. Just turn to Him and He will help you immediately. Amen? Hallelujah? Amen? You got it? Immediately. He's always waiting for you and I to come to Him. Waiting for you and I to say, Lord... I need you, Lord. I trust in you, Lord. I believe in you. And watch him do the miraculous. Amen. Amen. In conclusion, listen here. Peter is a great example for us today. He wasn't perfect and failed more than once, two, three times in his life. But he always followed Christ. He always turned to Christ. He always not give up on Christ when he failed. He come back, he came back, he came back, he came back to Jesus. He didn't let his own shortcoming, his own weaknesses to get in the way or slow him down in turning back to Jesus. The answer here to you is this. We do well to walk in boldness and faith that Peter have. One more time. We would do well to walk in the bonus and the faith that Peter had. You and I can. How can you do that today? Number one, fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Number two, don't just look at things from your natural eyes only. One more time. Don't just look at things from your natural eyes only. Number three, look to Jesus all times. Look to Jesus at all times and in all situations, whatever struggle it may be and challenges it may be. And lastly, no. Remember, say this word with me, no. That Jesus is always there to help you and me. Amen? He's always there to help you and me. Amen? Amen? I trust that you have learned the word today from Peter walking on water and let's practice it in our life. Always looking to Jesus, always trusting to Jesus. Do the best you can do, and then the rest, give it to Jesus and look to Him. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Will you lift your hands to the Lord? Let's pray in the Spirit for a minute. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are a wonderful God. Kuda rababa shikinda ramama sandai. Hallelujah, kuda rabaka shikindo rokoko handai raba sandai. Yikinda raba sandai. Yikinda raba sandai. Yikindo rabo suda raba sandai. Amen, amen, amen. You know, can I give you a short 20, 25 seconds to pray between you and God. Say, Lord, 
thank you for your word, the lessons they have learned today. I want to turn back to you. I want to trust you. I want to believe in you to do a miracle in my life today. Amen. I surrender myself and my situation to you and I'm going to believe in you as I look to you. Amen. Will you take that 20 seconds to pray right now? Our Father, we pray for all my brothers and my sisters and those who are following us online for this Sunday service. The message of lessons that we can learn from Peter walking on water. Help us, Lord. Help my brothers and my sisters to learn to look to you and not lift our eyes away from you or turn from you. Lord, I pray that you come through in ways beyond our comprehension in providing, in healing, in sustaining, in protecting, in leading, and in guiding all of, all of us. May you cover us with your precious blood. Bless my brothers and bless my sisters as we look to you and not stop looking at you and relying on you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know what? And some of you out there are not Christian yet. You have not received Jesus yet. It's a good time for you and I, for you, you know, to receive Jesus into your heart as a God and personal Savior. If you're interested, Follow me in this short prayer, will you? Do me a favor. Just bow your head and close your eyes for a while. In your heart, follow me in this prayer. Amen? Follow me right now, okay? Pray as I pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you to welcome you into my heart to be my God and my personal Savior. I surrender my life to you ask you to help me to lead me to follow you and be faithful to you in Jesus name I pray Amen let me pray for you Father we pray for all these who receive Jesus into their heart as a God person say I pray that you will protect them you will provide for them you will come true in their life in the time of challenging time and situation you take care of them. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Send us a message through or PM us or DM us in our website, you know, and so that we can come in contact with you. Or you can reach out to us by calling us. Amen. Welcome and God bless you. Let's close your prayer. Father, we pray that you let the light of your face shine upon every one of us. Upon our lives, our family, our businesses, our career, our education, our relationships, and our service and ministry. Lord, we pray that everything we put our hand into to do, you will bless us, you will help us succeed, you will prosper us. Every step that we walk daily, that you will protect us, you will lead us, and you will guide us. May you cover us with the precious blood, your precious blood. Bless us with a good Sunday and friendship with our family members and relationship and bless us with a great new week with your protection upon us. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and you have a great, great week. Amen. See you again next Sunday.